maker. 15 points, three rebounds, and again, the intangibles that he brings in addition to those numbers that you put on a, a stat sheet. Will Sheehy, terrific senior out of Stewart, Florida. Boy, his uncle, Tom, was some kind of star at the University of Virginia. It does run in the family. Mm -hmm. Luke Fisher gets the first. He has nine. Speaking of stars, Fuzzy Zeller, courtside. Yeah, I asked Fuzzy. I said, you know, I'm slicing the ball a lot. He said, point your left foot the other way. Well, that's all he said. I mean, what advice is that? Plus, he wanted you to pay for that, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the governor. Mike Pence taking in today's action. Fifty-nine, Indiana. Three twenty-five remaining. You think of this Hoosier club: six freshmen, four sophomores. They're going to go into Big Ten play with ten wins. Rucker on the drive scores and is fouled. I mean, you lose four one-thousand-point scores. Yeah, there will be rough spots. Probably, Jim, is it safe to say because they're so talented, but young, they'll win games you didn't expect them to win and maybe lose a game you didn't expect? Well, that's where the consistency comes in by having sometimes when you're so talented, you're, you, you, the, the attention to focus to detail is not there at times. And I, and I know that's something that Coach Green and his coaches have talked to their team about is that we just can't win on athletic ability and talent alone. Not in this one, because teams are too good. Yeah. And teams that you're going to face too are, you know, experienced. So we're going to have to rely on, yes, our athletic ability and our talent, but also what's above our net and play the game the right way. That's why it's important, even against the Kennesaw State, that. You, when you call out a play, you execute it offensively and defensively because you're going to need that once you enter in the Big Ten play. That's the next question here, Jim, is Indiana leads at 85 to 62, 18 to shoot. What does a freshman first discover about Big Ten play they didn't realize compared to the non-conferences? Kawasi fouls out. What, what was eye-opening for you going into the Big Ten. <laughs> I can still remember playing Purdue and Steve Scheffler was there and he set a down screen on and that was an introduction to the, how physical the Big Nine. Again, the times were different. The physicality of a conference. Again, you're playing against athletes and guys that were the best on their teams as well. So that's what you have to worry about. But also, too, going to play on the road in, in different environments. It's different than high school. How do you maintain a level of con concentration? And also, more importantly, as a freshman, when you're tired, consistency. The same thing you do in practice, being consistent, you want to play the same when you're playing in the game. A lot of times, it's a roller coaster ride with freshmen yep. because they don't know yet how to process how hard you have to work consistently. Indiana up 86 to 62. Vonley today with 14 points, nine rebounds. Almost another double double with two and a half minutes to play. Rucker got poked accidentally in the face, and that'll be on Vonley, and he has fouled out. So his day counts to an end as Noah Vonley fouls out with 14 points and nine rebounds. He's only a freshman, folks. Good Lord, how good is he going to get? And he's a freshman, but he's got the body of a senior. And that body will continue to fill out. I mean, you know, we don't know how long he's going to be in school. Two years, three years, one, I don't know. But the potential is there. And a lot like Cody Zeller, it's all about time. Well, he felt it wasn't right to leave when he, so he stayed another year. His body filled out, matured a little bit more. Uh, but this young man learning his spots on the court is going to be very critical and crucial once you're in a conference play because, again, you're going to play against guys that are just as strong, just as big. Yep. So you're not going to be able to overpower them like you're doing in a non-conference. So now you're going to have to use your brain, your mind, in order to get those offensive rebounds. Good, another Indiana turnover. That'll be the one thing that Tom Green oh. won't be happy with. 19 Indiana turnovers. Hartman with a steal. He comes the other way. 
Davis I beg your pardon Williams dribbled it off his foot make it 20 turnovers on the Hoosiers who lead it 86 to 64 with 203 to play back to back games where Indiana now has had 20 turnovers. Indiana has done again today is dominate the boards. They out rebounded Kennesaw State by a dozen. They lead the country in rebound difference. Indiana's out rebounding their opponents by an average of 14 a game this year. Number one in college basketball. Well, part of that too is you're not just relying on your bigs to rebound. Guards are getting those long rebounds off of three point shots. They're getting that kind of nose dirty a little bit and getting inside because. If you just rely on the post players to rebound, you're going to be in trouble because they're blocking out their men. Guards have to come in and clean up those loose rebounds, and Indiana's doing an excellent job around, across the board and rebound. You see the coaching continuing there with Tom Green and his star point guard, Yogi Ferrell. Wozniak makes the free throw. Indiana on top, 86 to 65. Coming up next, you saw it before on your screen. Penn State and Mount St. Mary's. Eric Collins and Sean Morris have the call from State College. 20-point Indiana lead, 141 to play. Yogi Farrell's day is done. He had 25 points, five assists. Noah Vonley, 14 points, nine rebounds. Will Sheehy, 15 points. Hartman on the wing. Inside he found Robinson. Scores on the drive. Stanford Robinson has a half dozen. Hoosiers up 22 with 1.15 to play. Eighteen on the shot clock. And another Indiana steal. Williams, I had to Hartman. <laughs> Hartman wanted to dunk, but the elevation time just wasn't there. <laughs> In his mind, he saw it happening, but his body didn't respond to the fact, but he got an easy two. A great unselfishness by Troy Williams. Well, at first, it was great anticipation defensively to get a deflection and get out yeah. and run. And then, you know, this team shares the ball. They do. And that's one thing. When, it, when a player is open, you know, they get it to their teammates, which is impressive for a young team. I don't think Tom Crean would keep you around very long if you were a selfish player. In transition right now, Williams with the left-hand pass. He wanted to dunk. Okay, he literally wanted to flush that down. Tires gave out just a little <laughs> bit on the elevation. <laughs> And he was smart though because he could have got hung if he would have tried yeah. to turn it over. So he, he did the smart thing and just lay it up. 90 to 66, Indiana with a final 10 seconds. So the Indiana Hoosiers will go to 10 and 3 as they head into Big Ten play. Illinois up next. Kennesaw State falls to 3 and 9. Mount St. Mary's and Penn State is coming up next. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. For Jim Jackson, I'm Tom Hamilton. Again today, Indiana rolls over Kennesaw State 90 to 66 as a huge day for Yogi Ferrell. 25 points and five assists. Will Sheehy added 15 points and Noah Vonley at 14 points and nine rebounds. Merry Christmas, happy holidays everybody. Now to State College. Just call it avant-garde basketball. Penn State's guards are up. DJ Newville and Tim Frazier making up the most potent backcourt in the country. It's Big Ten Network basketball coming your way from State College. Today we're at the Bryce Jordan Center getting ready to see the final non-conference tune-up for Penn State. Mount St. Mary's, the Mountaineers in town, taking on the Nittany Lions. 
Alongside my partner, Sean Morris, I'm Eric Collins, getting ready to tip it off. But before we do, Sean, let's check out today's Buffalo Wild Wings starting line. Eric, you hit on the backcourt of the Penn State Nittany Lions, but keep an eye on Ross Travis, putting together very quietly another outstanding season in State College, coming off a double-double performance last time out versus Princeton. Now for Mount St. Mary's, they're still looking for their first road win of the season. This is a team that likes to shoot the three ball. Keep an eye on Sam Prescott. He has struggled shooting the ball thus far this season, but Eric, a year ago, knocked down 10 triples on his way to 44 points versus Bryant. Now Patrick Chambers getting his team ready for what will be their third Big Ten season on his watch. So far in non-conference play, Nittany Lions eight and four, but coming off a real difficult pill to swallow. Losing eight days ago against Princeton in that game played over at Rec Hall, a game that they were up by 20 in the second half but couldn't hold on to the lead. For Mount St. Mary's, their second-year head coach, Jamie and Christian. This is a guy who used to play for Mount St. Mary's back in the early part of this century, and he spent some time coaching under Shaka Smart at VCU. So some similarities to Virginia Commonwealth in their style of play, particularly defensively, and what Mount St. Mary's will show us this afternoon. Tap is one, and we're underway. Penn State will have to defend the three-point line. Mount St. Mary's attempts 26 triples per ball game. That was an area of concern, particularly in the latter part of the second half and in the overtime last time out versus Princeton. Yeah, those 26 three-pointers attempted per game. That's 10th most in the entire country. We've got a turnover. Sam Prescott trying to get the ball inside, throws it out of bounds. So Penn State will have their first offensive look, and they're facing pressure in the backcourt. And if Penn State's able to get over the top of the pressure, Eric, they should have some good shots at the rim. This is a team in Mount St. Mary's that allows teams to shoot 51% against them on the year. Getting inside, Brandon Taylor dips it up and in. The sophomore from Tabernacle, New Jersey, coming on now in his second season in State College. And there's a wide open three-pointer, and Sam Prescott can hit that shot. Made 10 a year ago in a game against Bryant University. 44 points versus Bryant. He has struggled shooting the ball this year from deep, only 28%. But if you are Penn State, you have to locate him and make him put the ball on the floor, not allow him to be catch and release. It's going to be interesting to see how Mount St. Mary's reacts. This is a team that hadn't played in 15 days. Turnover and a missed shot inside, but an offensive rebound by Prescott. And right now, if you're Penn State, you can't be very pleased with the fact that Mount St. Mary's has beaten you to at least two or three loose balls. Julian Norfleet, team's leading scorer and also leading assist man, missing that three-pointer. We've got a real quick substitution. Ross Travis goes to the bench. He's replaced by Allen Roberts. And I think it stems from the fact of what we talked about the last possession. He wasn't very strong with the ball, was Travis, and then jogged back defensively. Coach Patrick Chambers did not like the effort, sends him to the pine. There is Roberts, got right to the rim and scores. Well, in that defensive sequence, that looked like the French in World War II. I mean, there was absolutely <laughs> no resistance put up. That's a moment ago. You can see Patrick Chambers making sure that his point is heard by Ross Travis, normally a guy who is just in high energy and a motor guy. Yeah, and I think he wanted to get his attention, but he was very, very weak with the basketball on that initial offensive sequence and then compounded it by jogging back defensively. The seven-footer, Taylor Danaher, misses inside. Penn State the lead in the ball. Just getting started. Two minutes into this one. Wide open inside. Donovan Jack. Mount St. Mary's struggles defensively. They're allowing their opponents to shoot over 50% from the field so far through their first 10 games. 51% to be exact, Eric, and 39% from deep. A little one-on-one -on -one basketball, and the jumper is good. That's Rashad Wack. Wack, a senior, transfer from George Mason, his first two. He puts up about 15 points per ball game for Mount St. Mary's. So you want to locate him as well. And you do not want to let, even though he didn't show it on his first offering, Julian Northley get going. Roberts a step in three. Offensive rebound. Taylor! Score the goal and he's fouled. Penn 
Kansas State hadn't missed a shot through the first two minutes and 44 seconds. Long shot by Roberts, not able to convert, but no one puts a body on Brandon Taylor, and that's the energy that Coach Patrick Chambers is trying to emphasize to a guy like Ross Travis. In a game like this, it's a very difficult game in this regard. Eric, you mentioned they are sitting on a tough loss for eight days, and these are young guys. They're looking forward to the upcoming break. You want to make sure that they're focused and locked in, and Brandon Taylor thus far has certainly answered that cause. Gregory Graves has checked in for Mount St. Mary's. He wears number 15. This is the seven-footer again, Danaher. Just a young sophomore. Takes his time and misses everything inside. Good defense played by Jack. Good job of walling up and going straight up vertically with the hands. Look at this. John Johnson into the game for the first time in a Penn State uniform. And he's called for the travel. This is something that Penn State Nittany Lion fans have been waiting on for a while. He's a transfer out of Pitt. Played for the Panthers his freshman year. Had some good games offensively. He's a real hot shooting three-point marksman. Now last year didn't play at all. Played one exhibition game and then sat out the entire year. Now he's eligible for the very first time with the Nittany Lions. We saw him practice last week. Looked very sharp. And you can tell right there, lack of game experience as of late. Really wanted to make something happen. No question he walked. Shot is missed from deep, run down in the corner by Newbill. You can see how highly Patrick Chambers values John Johnson. Gets him onto the floor in the first four minutes of the game. Newbill inside the spin off the window. Coast to coast score the goal. And that's going to be a chance for a three point play. Julian Norfleet makes the basket, draws the foul, has a chance for a three-point play here for Mount St. Mary. You talked about John Johnson. This is his first opportunity to wear the Penn State uniform in a competitive environment. And you can see with that initial catch that he really was in a hurry to do something positive with the basketball. Right now, you want to kind of knock, knock the rust off of him in terms of game experience and get him to slow down a little bit. Other name on that list, eligible for the first time today, is Jordan Dickerson. And somewhat of a surprise, Dickerson granted immediate eligibility. This is a guy who transferred after playing a year ago at SMU. John St. Mary's showing a little bit of a matchup look defensively, trying to stem the tide of allowing Penn State to get in the lane. It's been very effective for him, and a good job defensively by Mount St. Mary's locking down. Almost a shot clock violation. Roberts has to throw it up late. Here's Norfleet, just learning how to play the point guard spot. He'd been used as an off guard his first three seasons. He's done a nice job averaging about five assists per ball game for Mount St. Mary's and over two to one assist turnover ratio as well. Hand off, jump shot is good. Whack again, his second jumper is in. And as well as Penn State has played offensively to the first five minutes, they find themselves only up by a single point and Patrick Chambers, unwilling to wait for the media timeout, calls a timeout to regroup his guys. Here with 15.04 remaining in the first half. We, we've talked about it. The last time out, Penn State in a great environment in Rec Hall, up 20 in the second half. The Princeton Tigers able to climb all the way back and just a very difficult and tough loss for Penn State in a variety of ways. Your heart really went out to Tim Frazier, another outstanding performance, just not able to hit the layup in overtime. He has made and will continue to make a lot of big shots for this Penn State program. It was a beautifully designed play. Penn State was able to get a layup attempt at the rim. It was contested, and Frazier has hit that shot numerous times. Numerous times in his college career. One of the best players, not only in the conference, but in the entire country. And he just came up short. And Penn State losing for a fourth time in non-conference play. John Johnson now crosses the timeline. He's in the backcourt with Tim Frazier. This is Travis, comes up short, gets his own miss. And Travis will go to the free throw line. I like what the way Travis has responded to the tough coaching he got from Patrick Chambers, showing some effort and ability. Penn State's going to need that only up one here as we go to the break. 
It was the guy who started shopping too late for most sites, so he ordered from BestBuy.com and picked up his gift that night. It's never too late to order online. Pick up in-store the same day to get great gifts like the Beats Pill. Best Buy. Traveling through Big Ten country? Make sure you don't miss out on anything happening in the conference. Go to btn.com slash hotels for a comprehensive list of hotels carrying the Big Ten network. BTN kicks off 2014 in a big way. The best basketball conference in the country takes center stage with exclusive Big Ten Super Wednesday doubleheaders. And only the journey goes everywhere to capture the drama on and off the court. Plus, for the first time, experience the excitement of Big Ten hockey with Frozen Friday doubleheaders. It's all this January, only on BTN. EA Sports. It's in the game. EA Sports Madden NFL 25 is here. A game 25 seasons in the making. Through this one-time offer, you can get it free with your paid order of Sports Illustrated. Call or go online now to SIOffer.com. Run free with the all-new Precision Modifier in EA Sports Madden NFL 25. With your paid order, you'll also get the bonus video digital download of Football Life, Barry Sanders, and two Madden NFL Ultimate Team Legends. Unlock the action and boost your Ultimate Team's rating. This package is available only with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. These items at retail would cost more than $200, but through this amazing offer, just $39.95 gets you all this. 28 issues of Sports Illustrated, EA Sports Madden NFL 25, the bonus digital download video, and two Madden NFL Ultimate Team Legends. Order now and your shipping will be free. Don't miss out. Go online to SIOffer.com or call now. Welcome back, everyone. 14.53 remaining in our first half. Just getting started. Penn State on top of Mount St. Mary's with my partner, Sean Morris. I'm Eric Collins. This is kind of a rare situation for Penn State. We're 12 games into the season, and they're adding players to the roster. It's going to be a very interesting challenge for Coach Patrick Chambers, one that he's looking forward to to increase his depth. And this is an opportunity in the last non-conference game before the conference opener for Penn State on New Year's Eve to incorporate these two players, John Johnson, the backcourt player that transferred from Pittsburgh, and then some size along the front line in the transfer form of Jordan Dickerson, who transferred in from SMU. Dickerson in the game. He wears number 32 in white. This is a true seven footer, seven feet, 240 pounds out of Brooklyn. Ross Travis at the line shooting a pair makes the first. Now Ross Travis has been one of the best rebounding forwards in the conference the last couple of years, but he's undersized at only six six. He may be getting some help with Dickerson along that front wall. Ironically, the second leading returning rebounder in the conference this season behind only Adrian Payne of Michigan State. Mount St. Mary's down by three. Byron Ash into the game for the first time. He's number two. A little bumping going on inside, and the shot is up and in. That's Gregory Graves showing off a good frame. 6'7", 220 pounds. Scores at the rim. Well, that's a nice individual move by Graves. There's no double team. And he took it right at the seven-footer Dickerson and looked good doing it. Nice use of the glass. Graves averages just three points per game, but he's, he's got some moves in the paint. And we've got a foul called on Dickerson trying to get position inside. I think so a rough start to his Nittany Lion career. I think that pass might have actually just hit it the out-of-bounds. It was kind of difficult to see with from our angle. The, the officials... But I think this pass is might have hit out of bounds. Or he stepped out of bounds, yep. Oh, you're right. Newville had his left foot out of bounds when he caught the pass. So a contested pass leads to a turnover. Khalid Nwandu into the game, has the pass glance off his fingertips. He was being pressured by Ross Travis. And I'm impressed by how Travis has responded to the early benching, Eric. Coach Patrick Chambers didn't like the effort initially, and so many times you'll see a guy pout. He has not done that. He came in offensively, very aggressive there. Very active hands leads to the turnover. Nice job of responding by Ross Travis. What's Mount St. Mary's trying to accomplish with this pressure in the backcourt? Well, that would do it. <laughs> the guy in the Santa hat was open, but... 
they want to get the game up and down the floor. You talked about it because of the background of Coach Christian coming from VCU. They want to kind of get the game into an up-tempo, get some easy baskets in transition, and kind of throw some sand in the gears of what Penn State will be able to do offensively. For Mount St. Mary's, number 11, Will Miller into the game for the first time. You might Miller is a good shooter. You want to find him if you are Penn State. Knocked down five triples earlier this year versus Michigan State. There's a triple for Julian Norfleet. They have made three out of their first five three-point field goal attempts. And they lead by two. If you are Penn State right now, you have to get the ball inside. Taylor has it spin out. It was almost down. Norfleet hangs, throws up a wild one. And it's rebounded by Frazier. Doesn't look like a fun defense for Tim Frazier to play against. No, and right now, if you are Penn State, you got an early lead by going inside. You want to get in the lane, as Lugo does there. Dickerson tapped it around, finally cleared by Nwandu. Ahead of the pack, Ash able to save it, but it goes out of bounds. Penn State basketball. Now get involved in the Twitter conversation around today's game. You can go to btn.com slash connect. You can find our hashtags periodically in the upper right of your screen. BTN Connect, presented by Buick. Allen Roberts back into the game, replaces Jordan Dickerson. We've got just a handful of minutes. Also into the game, Donovan Jack as well for the Nittany Lions. The other reason, in addition to scoring, that you want to get the ball in the lane if you're Penn State is if you get the ball up on the window, Mount St. Mary's is a minus eight rebounding margin squad on the year. You have the size advantage. You want to be able to get to the rim and complete. Brandon Taylor, another chance for a three-point play. Oh, uses the shot fake and pretty good job by Donovan Jack of sealing off the inside defender there in Danaher. And Brandon Taylor has been the one guy that has consistently brought effort and enthusiasm here in the first seven or eight minutes of clock time for Penn State. Already seven points for Brandon Taylor. Chance for number eight right now. He averages 10 points per game. Oh, a nice start for the sophomore, Taylor. Now, one luxury Penn State has had this year is consistency of health. They have had the exact same starting five all 13 games they've played so far this season. And that is certainly good news for Coach Patrick Chambers because let's not forget a year ago, one of the best players in the conference, Tim Frazier, missed the vast majority of the season with an Achilles heel injury. Another rebound in traffic by Taylor, and the ball is promptly thrown away. Now you figure that backcourt, the veteran backcourt of Newville and Frazier playing together, this pressure in the backcourt wouldn't be the big deal. Turnovers in addition to the inability to close out on three-point shooters against Princeton was a big reason for that surprising loss last time out. 20 turnovers by Penn State and that loss to Princeton, 13 of those coming cumulatively between Newville and Frazier. Is that a surprising number considering how many games against high-level competition we've seen Frazier and Newville play? A absolutely, and especially when you consider the fact that Tim Frazier leads the conference in assists and has well above a 2-1 to -one assist turnover ratio. Black has his jumper spill out. Another rebound for Taylor, his fourth. Well, Taylor has certainly been the player of the game thus far for Penn State on both ends of the floor, providing some energy. This is Taylor with the ball. Taylor, quick trigger. I don't like that shot, Eric. You can, you've can. had great success going inside. You can get that shot any time. And if you're Taylor, you've been able to get to the rim and complete. Why go away from that? Wow, tough shot by Norfleet. He's a slight player, only 165 pounds. But he got inside and finished. He's got seven points. Yeah, they need to get that kid drinking some eggnog. Put, the, put a few LBs on him. Inside, Donovan Jack misses the bunny, but an offensive rebound and stick back for Taylor. Well, Taylor showing you why you want to get the ball inside and up on the rim. Mount St. Mary's, we talked about a very poor rebounding squad. And Danaher is whacked. We'll see Danaher at the free throw line when we come back. It has been a real nice start for the youngster from Trent, New Jersey. A tailor-made performance for Brandon. 
seat belts, headrests, and airbags help you survive a crash. But if you upgrade your headlights, you may even avoid one. See farther, wider, better. Silver Star Ultra Headlights from Sylvania. So you can get out of your element. So you can explore a new frontier and a different discipline. Get two times the points on travel and dining at restaurants from Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can be inspired by great food once again. Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can. Beginning Christmas Eve, relive an unforgettable Big Ten football season with the top 10 games of 2013 countdown. You'll see Michigan State triumphs on the way to a conference championship. Memorable victories from the Buckeyes' impressive winning streak. Overtime thrillers and other classic matchups that define the year. The top 10 football games of 2013 countdown begins Christmas Eve only on BTN. Carry around your favorite team wherever you go with the Big Ten Network mobile app. Get up there, young Create your own mobile man cave. Better play on through, guys. He's got live sports. It's team pride on the go. So make the Big Ten Network your plus one. The BTN to go app. Fan up, fans, and download it today. You do a lot to keep your family safe at home. So make sure they're safer on the road. See farther, wider, better. Upgrade to Silver Star Ultra Headlights from Sylvania. How about the start for Brandon Taylor? This is a guy who has been very aggressive in the early moments. And has provided a great deal of energy on both ends of the floor. And it's paid off statistically as well, Eric. Ten points, five rebounds for Brandon Taylor and has given Penn State a big lift. Take a look at today's State Farm State of Success. A lot of different options for Patrick Chambers. Already this season, six different players have led the team in scoring in a particular game. You see Brandon Taylor's name on that list. Of course, Tim Frazier, more often than not, is the guy who is going to be the lead bell cow on this Nittany Lion team. Well, when you have the two leading scorers in the conference in the form of Frazier and Newbill in your lineup, you have some offensive options. Ross Travis has also done a nice job of expanding his game offensively, and Brandon Taylor impressive thus far today. Now, this guy at the free throw line right now, Taylor Danaher, he is an elite free throw. He shoots 85%. He has made 16 in a row. He is now 25 for 29 at the free throw line for a seven-footer. That's real good. Well, for anybody, you know, when you're north of 85%, that's outstanding. Again, pressure in the backcourt that the Nittany Lions this time easily break. Jack has his pocket pick. Ball knocked out of bounds by Rashad Wack. Of the 18 points that the Nittany Lions have put up thus far, 14 of those have come in the paint, the other four from the foul line. So pound it in to that area. I don't like that shot. I just don't like it, Eric. You, you're, you've had the ability to get to the rim off the dribble, and until Mount St. Mary stops that, why go away from it? North Lake keeps the dribble alive. Hands it over to Four straight points for Danaher. Give the assist to Norfleet. Norfleet, you mentioned it. A recent convert to the point guard position. He's their leading scorer at 19 points per ball game, but showing you why he has an above two to one assist turnover ratio, averaging five dimes per ball game. And Frazier is fouled by Nwandu. Really nice job by Norfleet of forcing Penn State to rotate and break down defensively, and Danaher making himself available just above that left block for the finish. Roberts misses the shot, but he's fouled. He will have three free throw attempts. If he makes all three, we'll have a tie game once again. That's going to be the second foul on Danaher, the seven-footer contesting the three-pointer. Now 
January 12th. It's the much-anticipated premiere of BTN's original The Journey, Big Ten Basketball 2014. We take a closer look at the number one basketball playing conference in America, the people who live it. Premieres January 12th, only right here on BTN. Roberts has split the first two. He'll have one more. As Danner just picked up his second foul, it's going to be taken out of the game by Jamie and Christian. And Eric, we've talked about the additions of transfers. John Johnson from Pitt and Dickerson from SMU. Roberts also a transfer, a fifth-year player coming in from Miami of Ohio. Now the Nitton Lions are applying a little bit of backcourt pressure of their own. Almost a steal. It is a steal. Newbill's got the ball back. Roberts misses in transition and makes a personal foul trying to grab the rebound. Yeah, that was what is known as the mistake mistake syndrome. Good effort here by Newbill to slash in there for the pass, but you're going to see Roberts put his head down. Very fortunate to still have the ball, forces a shot, and then he compounds it out of frustration by giving the foul. First foul called on Robert. Oh. Pass to Nona in particular. Wack turns it over. Look at Frazier speed down the court. Gives him Jack. Oh, they missed it. Newbell inside misses the layup. Mount St. Mary's winless on the road. 0 oh, and 6. But they've got a one point lead against Penn State. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Mountaineers. Roberts and Jack both head to the bench for the Nittany Lions. Jordan Dickerson, his second tour in his first game with Penn State back on the floor, along with John Johnson playing in his first game for Penn State. You're just joining us, John Johnson, the transfer from Pitt. Jordan Dickerson, the transfer from SMU. Shot is up and in. That's a three-pointer for Byron Ash. That is the bread and butter offensively for Mount St. Mary's. We talked about it many times here in the first half, Eric. The Mountaineers averaged 26 three-point attempts per ball game. They've made four of their first seven three-pointers. The lead is four. Frazier bottled up. Skip past Taylor. And he has the ball just taken away by Ash. In transition for the goal, Byron Ash. Largest lead of the day for Mount St. Mary's. And right now, Mount St. Mary's is just more active overall than Penn State. There's no other way to put it. They're beating them to the majority of loose balls, and they've been active with the hands, whereas Penn State has been very lax in many situations and taking care of the basketball, and Mount St. Mary's on the last two occasions have made them pay. We had an interesting conversation with Jamie and Christian, second-year head coach from Mount St. Mary's, just talking about the schedule this, this team has played. They last played a basketball game on December 7th. It was 15 days ago. Travis inside gets it back for Penn State. Yeah, and st they started this season with almost an NBA type of schedule. They played their first eight games in the first three weeks of the season, almost an average of three per week. And then you mentioned it, they had to sit for quite a while, and they'll sit after this game as well. And their next game won't be until January 30th. Their next home game is not going to be until December. Seventh. They're going to go 35 days in between home games. Hey. Nice block inside by Dickerson. Wipes it away. On the other end, Johnson scores the goal. On both ends of the floor, the transfers show you what they bring to the Nittany Lions. It started with Dickerson, the block shot, and it ends with Johnson and the chance for the three-point play. I'm walking gently, I'm in the rain. The sun is up in the sky. I'm ready for romance. My heart is full of joy. If your renter's policy doesn't cover it, you might have to live with it. 
Talk to Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. New Year's Day. Before the action kicks off, tune in to BTN for the most in-depth analysis and reports from all four games. The State Farm Bowl pregame. New Year's Day at 11 a.m. Eastern. Only on BTN. No matter where you live, you can enjoy high-speed internet with HughesNet Gen 4, America's number one choice for satellite internet. My old connection just wasn't cutting it. Now I finally have high-speed internet that works where I live. Now getting homework done is easier than ever. Now my internet is so much faster. So is my bike. HughesNet Gen 4 is faster and better than ever. Enjoy more of what you love to do online. Call 1-800-426-3861. Now I can stay close to my grandson, even from here. Now I don't have to drive 100 miles to find shoes like these. With HughesNet, you can live where you love and enjoy faster surfing, downloading, <laughs> shopping, videos, music, and more. Don't waste another minute on a slow internet connection. Call today and get free standard installation for a limited time. Call 1-800-426-3861. Basketball on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. By Buffalo Wild Wings, your destination for Big Ten Network games. And by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Welcome back, everyone. So glad to have you along for the ride. Talked a lot about that backcourt combo of DJ Newbill and Tim Frazier. Normally, they combine for close to 40 points per game. They've only got a pair of points so far in today's game against Mount St. Mary. Yeah, Tim Frazier has not even attempted a shot, and DJ Newbill has missed a couple of opportunities, particularly at the rim, that he usually converts. Frazier, however, with a couple of rebounds and assists, they aid the cause. Well, we are expecting to see a free throw for John Johnson finishing off a three-point play opportunity. But the uh, three officials are having a conversation right now. I think they may be trying to figure out who that last foul was on. It looked like it was on number 22, Rashad Wack. Yeah, he was really the only guy in the vicinity. So this is what the officiating crew is looking at. is indeed on Rashad Wang. That's been clarified. So we will have John Johnson at the free throw line trying to complete the three-point play. Johnson is a guy is his only other college experience at Pitt was a really good free thrower shooting 83 percent making 25 of 30 his freshman year. One thing I've noticed over the years when you get guys who transfer from one school to the next if they had to sit out a year, they generally come back as better free throw shooters. Of, they do a lot of that. A lot of time on your hands. Mount St. Mary's, the lead is just one. And Penn State showing a little bit of a zone look to Mount St. Mary's right now. North Fleet dumps it out, Prescott. That's his second three-pointer he's made. Look out. This is a guy who could score in bunches. Made 10 three-pointers and had 44 points against Bryant University a year ago. Johnson in transition. Pretty reverse. A nice job by Johnson of pushing the pace. Mount St. Mary's very slow in getting back and got to the rim. We talked so much about what a great backcourt Penn State has. Well, that backcourt just got stronger. And a nice look ahead. And a good job there by Dickerson as well of kind of fanning out to give him a passing option if needed. But Johnson understood the, the defender was backpedaling, took advantage. Johnson, Frazier, Newbill, Dickerson, and Travis. The five on the floor for Penn State, down by two. Oh, Frazier, his first shot attempt. 
actually wave it off. He was fouled. He'll go to the free throw line and shoot two. But you have to believe in the last timeout situation that Coach Chambers was talking about. I don't want to see any more three-point opportunities. Let's dribble drive and get to the rim. That has been very successful for us thus far. And let's not settle for shots and kind of play into Mount St. Mary's hands by presenting a long shot, lot rebound, outlet pass opportunity. First point of the day for Tim Frazier. Stay tuned at the half for the State Farm Halftime Report. Mike Hall and Tim Doyle. They'll be breaking down our first half from State College and bring the highlights from around the conference on a busy Sunday of activity. It's been a busy weekend of activity. Great wins for the conference yesterday. How about Ohio State coming back and winning against Notre Dame? Ohio State, really, that game was essentially over, able to turn up the defensive pressure, and a great win for Illinois as well in the Bragging Rights game, and a nice win for Michigan over a Stanford squad that had handed UConn their first loss earlier in the season. You didn't mention the win for Michigan State. Unbelievable job by Adrian Payne, dropping a Larry Bird on the Longhorns. 33 points for Payne. <laughs> We're tied at 29. Six minutes and change remaining here in our first half. This is the most time we've seen Mount St. Mary's use on the shot clock. Shot clock down to 10. Open look at. How did they get such an open look? Four rotation defensively on that back line. They reversed the ball. They went from the top to the right, and then back to the left, and they lost sight of Ash. And you have to close out on these three-point shooters of Mount St. Mary's. It's just a pair. Coming right back, Deadaway and Frazier. Maybe the offense stepping up a bit. That's his first field goal. He's got four points. Mary's a year ago, 18 and 14. Inside, Norfleet finishes with his off pass. He's a left handed player. That was a contested right handed layup. He's got nine. And then what you have. Well, I thought they might have called an inbounds violation, but a nice job by Norfleet. Good use of the hesitation dribble to get Penn State out of their stance. And this young man has been very, very impressive thus far from Mount St. Mary's. Frazier goes one on one. The lead for Jack. That was set up by some playmaking. Frazier to Donovan Jack. Penn State's offense should be reminiscent of Sherwin Williams. Everything in the paint. There's no need to settle for three point shots. Absolutely none. There's a three point shot for Mount St. Mary's. Comes up short by Prescott. Ash! Wow! Four-point lead for the Mountaineers, and Ash is three for three from behind the arc. And what you have seen is that that three-point accuracy has put a little bounce in Mount St. Mary's step defensively. They've been very active with the hands, almost coming up with another steal there. This three-point marksmanship against Penn State reminds me of eight days ago when Princeton really lit up the Nittany Lions from behind the arc. Especially in the second half for the visitors. Frazier misses a shot he normally makes and is actually gimpy yeah, on his way back down the floor. Yeah, that's something to keep an eye on. Great point there, Eric. He was jogging very gingerly back. Frazier coming off an Achilles injury leads the conference in minutes played per game. And if you are Mount St. Mary's right now, you need to take advantage of that and go right at Frazier defensively. Prescott, wow! Big shot for Sam Prescott. And that rim looks like the size of a manhole cover right now for Mount St. Mary's. Everything's dropping. And that's the third triple by Prescott. You need to find him. Prescott and Ash are getting it done. You would think it would be Norfleet and Rashad Wack, the two leading scorers. They've contributed in other ways, but it's been Ash and Prescott who have really done the job from behind the arc for Mount St. Mary's thus far, and that is not a surprise if you are Penn State. Mount St. Mary's area came in, as we've talked about, averaging 26 three-point attempts per ball game. They've already made eight three-pointers. We should mention the bizarre stat of the afternoon. When Mount St. Mary's has made seven or more three-pointers on the year, 
They've lost all seven games. The only seven games they've lost is when they've made their largest amount of three-pointers in a game. And if anyone would have that stat handy, you're the guy. <laughs> On the other hand, well, Penn State, they have not made a three-pointer. They are 0 for 5. But as you've been saying, Sean, pound it inside. Either off the dribble or via the interior feed because they've been able to get anything they want going toward the rim. Johnson's shot was tipped on the way up. And it's Mount St. Mary's ball with the lead. Up 7. Prescott is fouled. He'll go to the free-throw line. Foul called on Donovan Jack. The last highlight to tell you about for Penn State, Frazier finding Jack for two. Penn State needs more of that. They're down seven. Mine was earned orbiting the moon in 1971. Afghanistan in 2009. On the USS Saratoga in 1982. Once it's earned, USAA auto insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve current and former military members and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA, we know what it means to serve. to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Micro Essentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Micro Essentials, get more from every acre. Weeknights, join the conversation on BTN Live. I'm excited, Dave. It's the most comprehensive nightly Big Ten discussion. I am really impressed with the character of that team, the coaching of that team. This is a deep team, very dangerous team, and they'll get up and down the court. From the people who know the conference better than anyone. It's an unbelievable question. It might be the best question in the history of BTN question. Live. I think it's going to be a great game, and I can't wait to see it. BTN Live, weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN. Welcome back, everyone. 324 remaining in the first half. Penn State trailing Mount St. Mary's by seven. Tim Frazier, scary moment for him a moment ago. Eric, we talked about it. As he jogged down the floor, no contact. So many times on the dribble drive, you'll see someone maybe have their ankle rolled by stepping on someone's foot, but it looked like he might have just landed awkwardly and then jogged back very gingerly on the ensuing defensive possession. Doesn't look like there's much concern as Frazier is on the bench for the moment. Free throw is missed by Prescott. He'll have another. Prescott, for as good a shooter as he is, mentioned he made 10 three-pointers in the game a year ago. He's below 50% at the free throw line. On the year, he is now 10 of 20. So he's exactly at 50%. Well, the way he shot the three-point shot today, maybe he should just step back behind the arc, which is legal, by the way. Can you shoot it as far back as you want? As long as you're behind the line. Can you shoot it from an angle as well? What am I, Pythagoras? I don't know. <laughs> I just know you can shoot it behind. <laughs> Travis inside gets the roll. 35 points for Penn State, all right? 26 of those have come in the paint, the other nine from the foul line. You don't have to be James Naismith. Go to the basket. So they have not made an outside shot today. Everything they've made has been in the paint or at the free throw line. Into the game for the first time, Geno Thorpe. He wears number 13 in white for Penn State. He's up high, pressuring the ball, and Julian Norfleet. Norfleet still gets inside, feeds Prescott. Prescott just needs to fire that one up with the shot clock winding down. Here's Thorpe. 
Nice rotation defensively, but I like what Thorpe did going toward the rim. Wow. Are you kidding me? The offense just keeps on coming. That time Rashad Wack with a nice play. Eight points per Wack. He was easily, Eric, five feet behind that line. Lead is nine. That's the largest lead for Mount St. Mary's in today's game. Still no jumpers have fallen for the Nittany Lions. You can get that shot anytime. No need to panic. You're playing right into Mount St. Mary's hands. Oh, that was a crazy shot by Ash. It's the first shot he's missed in today's game. Had been four from four. Under a minute and a half to play. First half. Penn State playing their final non-conference game before starting the conference season December 31st at home against Michigan State. Travis misses inside. Still like it. If you're Donovan Jack, you have to post up with a greater sense of urgency than he showed in that previous possession. Norfleet now in double figures with 11. How is this Mount St. Mary's team winless on the road? Newville gets an easy two. And now what Penn State has, they have the opportunity for a two for one. You see the shot clock and the game clock right now is under 50 seconds. So Penn State, if they do their job defensively, will have a chance to get the ball back again. Stay tuned. News highlights more. State Farm halftime report coming your way in 35 seconds of game time. Mike Paul, Tim Doyle, and our Big Ten studio standing by. Shot clock down to 10. Norfleet. Still plenty of time for the Nittany Lions. They're going to play this final moments of the first half without Tim Frazier. DJ Newbill's got the ball. Taylor, elbow jumper. And the first half is in the book. Penn State plays 20 minutes, and they did not make a shot from outside the paint in the first half. They are trailing Mount St. Mary's by nine at the break. 46-37 our score. Right now, let's get it back to our Big Ten studios and join Mike Hall and Tim Doyle for the State Farm Halftime Report. Well, this would be a bad back-to-back -back games for the Ninny Lions. Tim and Mike here in our Chicago BTN studios. They lose to Princeton at home playing at the rec center in their last game in overtime. And now they do not look very good. It seems like it's a carryover effect, right? They gave away that game to Princeton in the second half. And in this first half, defensively, Pat Chambers cannot be happy. No energy, no enthusiasm, no talking. And Sean Morris talked about it kind of religiously during the game about poor defensive rotations. Mike, in the first half, Mount St. Mary's made nine three-pointers, and I counted seven of them being wide open. So I'm sure the halftime speech from Pat Chambers is going to try to inspire his guys to get out there and play. And they need some buckets. I mean, they're two high scorers. Newville and Frazier average almost.